it is mid-July, so not only are the temperatures heating up, but it's also time for my real estate market update for the month of July. And if you've seen any of the updates I've done the past couple of months, you know, these are strange times that we're living in. There's a lot of, it's a lot of fluid movement, to be honest with you, back and forth. And we're going to focus on many of the similar sort of things this month. We'll kind of take a look at the unemployment, the latest that's going on in the economy, as well as what some of the projections are with regards to home prices going forward. This is Andrew with the Andrew Smith team at EXP Realty. And if you would just take a moment, hit that like button down below and even subscribe to this channel. And anytime I put out another update, you will instantly get notified and can check those out. So looking at unemployment first, that's been a hot topic. And it's been something that there's been a lot of information put out about, um, you know, on the unemployment dragging the economy down and what that could happen or what, <clears throat> excuse me, the impact could be on housing. So we're going to start there. And in June, for the second month in a row, the number of jobs gained blew past expectations. So the consensus was a little over 3 million jobs would be added in June. That's what the forecast was showing. And in actual fact, 4.8 million jobs were added. So the rate of recovery of the economy has been impressive. It's been coming back very, very quickly. Could there be some hiccups? Yes. And we'll get into that in just a second. And as you know from, from the previous monthly updates that I've been doing, this the unemployment and this recession that we've been in has hit the hospitality and the service industry extremely hard. Restaurants, hotels, airlines, travel, those are the areas that have been hit the hardest. And those are the areas for the second month in a row that saw the biggest gains when it comes to unemployment. So here's a look at where those 4.8 million job gains were. And as you can see, 2.1 million were in leisure and hospitality, with the second biggest increase in job gains coming in the retail segment, which isn't to be unexpected as things started to open back up, and then followed by education and health and then other personal services manufacturing. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, with the U.S. job growth surging last month, it, it kind of underscored what we've been saying for the past four months. And that is the economy going into the pandemic, into this recession was very strong. And that all of the framework was there that we could bounce back very quickly, which is what has happened. The economy has bounced back very quickly. But as I just mentioned, that's not to say that there isn't some uncertainty going forward. And a recent coronavirus, coronavirus spike um, could undermine some of this. Absolutely. You're seeing states such as California and a couple of others start to roll back some of the, uh, the opening up that they have done of that economy, which is definitely going to have an impact. How much of an impact that is going to be remains to be seen. But the other thing to point out with the unemployment, something that I've been tracking that I haven't actually directly touched on in the last couple of reports I've did was something known as core unemployment, which I'm going to explain right here. And core unemployment actually divides that unemployment number, and it takes out the unemployment that is considered temporary um, and looks more at permanent unemployment to see what that looks like. And as we've moved further along into this, there are companies that have closed. There are some job losses that were expected to be temporary, which have in fact become permanent. And that core unemployment number has been going up. It's not anywhere near as bad as it was in April 2010. As you can see here, in April 2010, it was at 10.5%. But the core unemployment here, which is a lagging indicator, meaning as we went into this in March and April, 
many of those people that were furloughed and claimed unemployment were fully expected that you know we'd be shut down for a month or so and then we'd open back up and things would start to get back to normal and as this has dragged on a little bit and started to affect different industries in different ways some of that temporary unemployment has become permanent so you can see in april may and june the core unemployment rate has actually climbed it's still nowhere near where it was back in 2010. I expect that July will probably see that go up again a little bit, but how long that will last honestly depends on what happens in the next couple of months with regard to the economy and the impact of the virus. Now, when you look at unemployment, the biggest factor as it relates to housing that people have asked me and that you may have seen reports on in the news is that it's going to lead to a flood of foreclosures, which is going to be devastating for the market. And I've been saying for the last couple of months, I don't think so. I don't see it. This isn't 2008. I won't go into all of those details here. You, you can you know look up one of the prior videos if you're interested in learning more. But the reason I say that is the banks learn their lesson. And yes, there are a lot of homes in forbearance, but it's very, very different the situation now as it was then. Take a look at this. So of all the active forbearances, which are past due on their mortgage payment right now, 77% of those homes have at least 20% equity. That isn't a luxury we had in 2007, 2008. If you add those numbers up further, 90% of all homes currently in forbearance have at least 10% equity in them. That's enough equity to have an option. And that was pointed out recently by Black Knight Financial. They said here, the high level of equity provides options for homeowners, policymakers, and mortgage investors and servicers to help avoid downstream foreclosure activity and potential default-related losses. Will there be an uptick in foreclosures? Yes. There are foreclosures in every single market, good and bad. There have been foreclosures the last few years, even though the economy has been strong. But based on this, you know, I don't honestly think, let's look at a $400,000 home. If somebody has a $400,000 home and they've got 20% equity, that's $80,000 in equity they have. They could sell that home as everything stands right now, pay any and all costs, pay off that loan and have plenty of money left. Who is going to walk away from that much equity? It doesn't make any sense. They may not want to have to move, but there's a choice there. That choice, as I mentioned, didn't exist, you know, back in 07 and 08. So with this in mind and with the uncertainty in the economy, what does that mean for home prices going forward? And to kind of give you an idea on how nobody knows for sure, the crystal ball is foggy for absolutely everyone. Take a look at these long range projections on home prices. They're a little bit all over the board here. They range from a high of 4% to a low of 6.6% decline on where prices are gonna go in the next year. So you can see the Mortgage Bankers Association, the National Association of Realtors, Zellman and Associates, Reuters, um, they all believe that home prices are gonna continue as does Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae's a little bit more even keel. They don't see a big change in home prices. Even Zillow and House are basically less than 1% of depreciation, meaning home prices are basically going to tread water. But take a look at CoreLogic. CoreLogic is really reliable on their information in many times. They're a great source. The only information I have been able to get to add on to this is CoreLogic was looking at the potential of the coronavirus and the economic aspect of this and wasn't necessarily taking the supply equation fully into the calculations to come up with this number. So it'll be interesting to see if this gets adjusted at all, but 
I don't think prices are going down by 6.6%. And again, that's a national average. And part of that is being dragged down, according to core logic, by the expectation that well, there will be some fairly substantial declines in certain markets. Las Vegas is one that they announced um, because of the hospitality industry and the impact the second shutdown could have there. I spoke to some agent friends in, color in Las Vegas in the last week. They're not seeing any slowdown in the market as of yet. It's, it's moving very, very rapidly. Now, what I touched on there was supply and demand. Now, real estate, like any other commodity, the prices are dictated by supply and demand. If supply is high and demand is low, you're going to see prices come down. On the other hand, if demand is high and supply is low, which is what we've been experiencing the past several years, prices continue to increase. That's why my own opinion is that prices may tread water in some areas, but I don't see a big decline and I don't see necessarily huge gains. The, the supply and demand equation right now favors pricing to continue to increase. The uncertainty could put a cap on that and keep prices treading water a little bit. But when we look at supply and demand, take a look at this with regards to listings. Okay, now we know that in early March, when all of the restrictions went into place, the number of listings in the market, which represents supply, plummeted. They went down drastically. And then they started to come back. They've steadily worked their way back. Week over week, new listings has continued to improve. But look at total listings year over year. Even though new listings in the past two months have been improving, year over year, they're still down. Buyer demand is up. Showings are up. Mortgage rates are historic lows, which is driving a lot of that demand, which is another reason I'm not quite sure that I believe the big decline in price, um, you know, potential price, uh, home prices in the next 12 months. Again, here's this is from Realtor.com. Um, summer home buying season is off to a roaring start as buyers flood into the home market. Their monthly traffic hit an all-time high of 86 million unique users in June, breaking the record set just one month before of 85 million. So more and more people are online looking. That online looking usually is a good leading indicator of future activity, future demand. Could it change? Absolutely. But right now, you know, in Frisco, Texas, where I'm based, and Southern California, Temecula, where my team also operates, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing it at all. We're seeing strong buyer activity. We're seeing strong sales. And everything on that side is continuing to increase, improve, and prices are continuing to go up. Now, Zellman and Associates here is saying the severity of the inventory tightness should remain a relative benefit to home prices. Again, low supply forcing those prices up. But they also correctly point out that it is a risk factor to the degree of a rebound in unit sales. What that basically means is if the inventory isn't available, if it's not on the market, it can't be sold. So if it can't be sold, it's gonna cap the recovery that the, in, that the real estate market could see. So again, the, the biggest thing holding it back right now is inventory, but there is a lot of uncertainty out there. I can, I can understand that. Nobody knows for sure. I mean, I'm watching the reports as closely as you are. And as I get new information, I will make sure I bring it to you. But I do know right now that, you know, if you've got specific questions, contact a local agent in your area. I mean, real estate is very local. What's happening in one city may not be the same as what's happening in the city right next to you. It can vary greatly. So it's important to get the, the most up-to-date information on the area that you're most interested in. But other than that, the summer buying season is going very, very strong on reports that I'm getting from all over the country. Now, if you've got specific questions and you want more information, on your unique situation, please feel free to reach out. My contact information is directly below and I'd be happy to help in whatever way that I can. Otherwise, 
We will catch up with you next month for the market update for August.